to his servant is is one of his actions is very beloved to Allah Allah Ta'ala likes it very much Allah Ta'ala is very pleased with the action of his servant rather we can understand that if we look if we look from uh, with vision and long term then all the rewards of the hereafter that Allah Ta'ala has given and that Allah Ta'ala is keeping for us then for one reason Allah Ta'ala has kept those rewards and the goodness for the hereafter and that is it looks like a very minor thing but it is the biggest effort and mujahida of life it's a minor it's not large scale but that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an opportunity to a human being that opportunity that chance if he can take a benefit from it which, ben- which opportunity? regards to the hereafter that he can get closer to Allah he can get attain the love of Allah if a person takes the benefit and grabs that opportunity, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this action of his servant, he really likes it very much, Allah ta'ala. And this action of his servant, Allah ta'ala says, that I gave him a chance, I gave him an opportunity, and my servant, he valued that opportunity. He appreciated it. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Qadr is a big thing. And so many opportunities, so many chances Allah Ta'ala gives to a human being during his life. In reality, everything that Allah Ta'ala has given to us during our lives, all of that is for this purpose, for this reason. So that we can, through those opportunities, attain Allah's qurb, His nearness. We can earn the hereafter, make our hereafter, and also make this life good as well, in the world. Everything, Allah Ta'ala, whatever He's given to us the opportunities is for that reason. What a great hadith the Holy Prophet ﷺ stated with regards to this point. That everything has a zawal. Everything has a zawal. Why is there a zawal? It's to a certain time. Everything is to a certain time or a certain limit. Insan. So that the benefit, a person gets the benefit of something whilst it's there and if he values it. And then he, ben- he gets the benefit and gets the goodness. But then Allah Ta'ala ends that thing. The zawal comes. The end comes. And it disappears or goes away from that person. So when that opportunity or chance or that thing that Allah Ta'ala gave goes, then Allah Ta'ala creates a recognition in that person. An awareness, oh Ya Rabbi, I've done wrong. If I had availed that opportunity, it would have been very good. And his final conclusion, like just like the Quran has stated, the scene of that will be, at that time, those people will be punished and given Jahannam, hellfire. Even those people will be in paradise as well, on top of that. That despite being in paradise, obviously in Jahannam there will be that issue. But there will be an emotion that will overcome the people of paradise. And it will happen, that will be regret. regret. In other words, can anybody regret in paradise? Or have any... Uh, hard feelings but those people will be regretting 
the, this why they will see all when they see all the rewards and the darajat of doing good actions because all the veils will be removed Allah will show everything and they will see people going on high levels high maqams when they see this the people of paradise that this person did this and look what he's getting then at that time from their mouths a word a statement will come if only if only in our lives the time we wasted we had passed it in the dhikr of Allah subhanallah what a great thing eh, if we think about it that Allah those times you gave us those moments if only we had passed those moments in your dhikr but today we're seeing Lord the benefit those people have taken with dhikr in other words, such hadith, Allah Ta'ala gives us messages, Allah Ta'ala tries to uh, create that awareness within us. Let's say you're alive and you've got consciousness, Allah gives you many chances and how we waste that wealth, how we waste that wealth. Such a great name that Allah Ta'ala has given to us, I've seen in, in lives of people. And that we don't stay alive forever. And those opportunities don't stay forever. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has explained to us and a beautiful warning. A beautiful warning that before death, then consider your life as a wealth. Yes, because life won't stay forever. This life isn't for. Uh, think is what is your target, what is your mission? Life is being given for this reason, so that you can get close to Allah, so you can make your hereafter, so you can understand your purpose of life. And the darajat Allah says are given you in the hereafter, those things I've set aside, that wait of you, you cannot imagine what's there. So why will you get those things in the hereafter? What is it that you give you the attainment of those things hereafter? It's your life in this world. Life in this world. Yes? So that if you spend your life in playing and dramas, that when the trap of death will come, then what happens to a man? What happens to a person? Then he sees, oh, oh, I've gone. I've gone. And everything evaporates and disappears. So there we need that thing in the hereafter for which Allah gave us life in this world. Our, there's an event that happened in my life I can never forget. Rather for me it was a very good event. Person like me, lazy person, negligent person. Then I always think about that event. When I get a bit maybe lazy on an action, a bit negligent, then I'm grateful to Allah. Then that event comes in front of my eyes and I remember it and it jogs me. It jogs me. Then I take the learning from it. Because every incident, it's Allah who gives you examples in the world. It's Allah who gives the warnings in life. It's Allah who gives you incidents. Every action, Allah creates an action. Every sickness, Allah gives the sickness. But, the people who have wisdom, intellect and brains, they will always start, at the, every incident, they look for Allah's hikmah. I went to meet a brother, and he was quite close and he was, uh, mashallah, very close to me. And I had a lot of love for him and he had love for me. And even now I have love for him. I even saw him in a dream, in a good place I saw him. Because when you know somebody favors you, somebody, when somebody helps you, that's a great thing. Even a little thing, if somebody favors you in a nice way, it's a great, great action. And he, he favored me. His favor was upon me that... I was in a problem at one, at one stage and he helped me. He assisted me. That's all it was. And there was no deep friendship with him, nothing else. But I was in extreme distress once and he helped me at that time. When there was nobody to help me at that time, he helped me. He assisted me. So obviously, at that time, I helped him when there was nobody to help him. Vice versa. And Allah showed me that as well. But he was uh, a bit weak. Uh, the poor brother and he had a lot of bad habits and he was very rich and Allah Ta'ala gave him everything but subhanallah that's also a test that wealth is a test and poverty is a test all of these states are a test in life so when he was tested then he came onto the path and I saw this with my eyes the zawal the zawal with my eyes I'm seeing that that he went to the heights, he had a lot of money, wealth and dunya, anyway. So the news came that he's sick in Manchester. It was sad, I was sad, I felt sad. At that time I was busy, the khanqa issues, mamalat, khanqa matters. And I said, doesn't matter what happens, I need to definitely go to meet him, doesn't matter what comes. 
what took her. So khair. Uh, however, I, I, I sacrificed other things. I went to meet my friend in that condition, how sick he was. I didn't know what the sickness was. So I went there to the hospital and he was lying down. And he was very happy, he tried to get up. And he was a powerful, strong man. Good health, good strength. And he used to pick heavy things up. So when he saw me, he was so happy. And I said to him, What's happened to you? You're lying down on the bed. You're a smart man like you, strong. Whenever you see, I remember that Mu'min Sahib when he used to come, Rahmatullah Alayhi. Then when we met first, how do you know when he, when he used to meet me, he'd shake hands and say, Huh? Hazrat, today Kamal, they are looking at you today. Today, you look more beautiful and handsome than before. Subhanallah. That was his first statement. That is, mashallah, you look so healthy and beautiful and handsome more. Subhanallah, before and now, they're so healthy you are now. And then that gives encouragement to a person, that person who's already down. So, that three or four times he'd say this, repeat this. So even today, his words, we remember... What good people they were. We, when we go to a sick person, Oh, you're sick. Oh, you can't be cured. It's very difficult. Oh, the child was ill. And with that illness he died. It was due to that illness he died. He was sick. And he was wiped away. Oh, it's very dangerous. Oh, Allah khair karagami. And you discourage him. Maybe if that person's going to die, but he dies out of total sadness. Oh, you're gone. You're gone. So I sat there and I said, What's happened? Get her. I said, Praise Salah. What are you doing here? And a lot of encouragement came to him. And he said that, uh, I remember Medina. I said, MashaAllah. Then what did he say? I remember that place where you used to do it, Takaf. SubhanAllah. I said, what? So I'm trying to explain something to you, something to listen. That I'm telling you this whole story. And doctors have told him that you've only got a few days left in life. Very severe cancer. Suddenly it became apparent, his cancer. Uh, suddenly. Yes. And like the, I think we were going on Umrah and he went to get the injection, immunization. They said, injection, forget that, come here. That's what happened to him. He went to get the immunization and they said, please come to the side. There's an issue here. And they realized that his body, the cancer had spread. They said, you come to the hospital, let's admit you. And uh, the, the journey, your journey won't occur. And that's how he became sick. So, the brother, and he smiled and he laughed and he said something. Then he said one statement. Hazrat, the doctor said that very few days are left in my life. And who's, I said, who said this? Has Allah, told, has Allah told you this? Has Jibreel told you this message? Have the angels come and told you this? What are you saying? I said, do dua. Inshallah, Allah will give you life. And then he started to cry. He said, if I get a bit more life by Allah, Hazrat, that I have one desire in my heart. Look at his desire. I have one desire in my heart, Hazrat. And he's crying, crying. If Allah gives me life, I promise to you, Hazrat, one desire. What I said. He said, I will never leave the Hanka. I will never leave Zikr. Good statement. And at such an opportunity before death, if a person has this desire, then Allah Ta'ala will give him that. Allah will assign that to him, bestow that to him. So what happened? The one moment in the company of the Holy Allah. Yes, these promises, how do they come out? That for a second or a moment, that somebody, he went to meet somebody for dua. And the other worldly people, what words were you going to do? The whole life long he came. But one person when he went with the sadness of the akhirah, then Allah Ta'ala made him say the statements that you are jannati. Yes, obviously he had to have a friendship with good people. Have friendship with good people, make good friends. Make friends that the time of death, that if you couldn't achieve during your life, that at least during the death he can save you. That at least he can help you during death. At least stand up for him during your life. Somebody who can help you at death time. If you're weak, you don't have amal, you don't have practice. Obviously, our situation, but at least do this. That have a good friend, a friend of Allah, and stick to him. Adhere to him. And just sit with them, talk to him, sit in his majlis. Don't do too many things that he's telling you to do, you don't understand. But at least pure, clean heart, with love and muhabbat. Sit with him in the majlis, sit with good people in the majlis. At least do that. Okay, if you can't, at least in a month, once do that. If you can't come once a week, if you can't do that, then at least read some book, read some kitab. If you can't even do that, if you can't do that, then at least that his words, listen to them via somebody else. But I tell you very clearly one thing. 
that with my experience I tell you, the most valuable precious thing that will come use in the akhirah is the company of the walis of Allah, the pious people. I tell you this in Ramadan with the fast on the night of Laylatul Qadr, I'm telling you this. Believe it or don't believe it, it's your choice. But so beneficial and useful. I told you what's the dua of the Laylatul Qadr. What does Allah Ta'ala say about Laylatul Qadr? I told you it's the other day, isn't it? Jibril Islam came and he said that I am going to give the message to everybody that the, the instruction I was given. What's the message Allah said? I've forgiven everybody except some sinful people I will not forgive. Obviously, it's Allah's order. So Jibreel alayhi salam, he went with that message back and he went back to Allah. What did Allah say? Jibreel, that you said right, but now what, what does your Rabb say on top of that? Listen to that statement, same statement. That I have also those forg- uh, sinful people have forgiven them. Why? Because those people they were connected to pious people. They did dua for them, and due to those duas of those pious people, I forgave those sinful people. Allah Akbar. Then further, Allah said, because the ummah, this ummah is very close to me. This is all oh, Allah says. I love this ummah. No one can understand. Nobody can think. Nobody can feel the love of Allah to this ummah. So the friends of Allah, Allah Ta'ala has made an excuse, intermediary, so that he can forgive the ummah. Don't go Kaaba, don't go Umrah, don't go to the masjid, don't go anywhere else. But do one thing definitely, that at least sit with the wali Allah and ask him to do dua for you. Where, where, where the benefit will come? The Jibreel where he failed. Everything stopped. Allah Ta'ala said eventually at the end that you don't even know the secret behind this. They are forgiven those sinful people. Why? Because there were people present alive doing dua for them. And they did dua for them. So, that brother, when he said this, then I started to cry as well. Why? Because this was going to happen. What happened? Then Allah's hadith is so beautiful. That before death, then consider your life as wealth. Before death. You are sat here today. Ask those who can't sit here. They're in their graves. The hadith states that most of all, most of all those people at this moment in time who will be looking at this scene of Ramadan, they will be looking at the scene of Ramadan. Most of all, who will be regretting most? Those whose eyes are open wide. So much they are regretting right now, those people who have died, that if only Allah Ta'ala, only if you gave us one more Ramadan, Allah, one more Ramadan if you would given it to us, Allah, there's such a great Ramadan it would have been for our Akhirah. And they're crying. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, two months in advance, had given the advance notice of this month, my brothers. That before death, consider your life as wealth. Allah has told us this. La ulahab. That Allah Taala doesn't give something for nothing. Allah Taala says, the so valuable things have given you life, and the life will finish. Your life is so precious. But it will finish when a person's dying. When everything's being wrapped and wrapped up, then all his desires and just like that brother, I've told you his story. All the world he desires, wealth, money, you know, wife, he doesn't remember anything at time of death. He remembers one thing. Allah, if I had an opportunity now, I'd do your dhikr right away. See how a person comes alive then. Oh wait, that time when it's useful to you, now we don't use it. We don't use it. We're not using it. We're not utilizing it. You're lying down on the same bed that the poor man's been in. When you're dying, just like the poor man will die, you will die as well. Today your wealth is not helping you. Your mouth is not helping you. Your fruits not helping you. Your children aren't helping you. Nothing's helping you. Today you are remembering that amal that all life long you wasted the opportunities on, based on your desires and your nafs and the enmity of your nafs against you and on your laziness and your negligence. And I tell you this now. That no thing is there that can come against us. If a person has courage and determination to get close to Allah, to utilize life, everything Allah Ta'ala then makes easy for you. I'll tell you all those things that I have learned from my experience and I'm sharing that with you. Nothing is hard. There's no difficulty in life. Nothing remains difficult. If a man plans and makes him, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll go there, I'll do this, I'll achieve this. Alhamdulillah, then he achieves those things when he plans it. He achieves Laylatul Qadr. He gets the company of the Sheikh. He gets dhikr. And Allah Ta'ala gives him everything as well. And people are amazed, stunned. That how did he plan this? How did he achieve this? How did he attain this? Because systematically he plans. Yes? Just a few people that in a, a whole year he does not attain. In a few hours he attains that. Because he valued it. He had appreciation for it. Thousands of people listen Listen, the look, the good pious persons come. And how much do people value that? Maybe one or two people. Maybe, let's go and listen to this and do this. 
But the thing that's been given to him according to the practice, what is Ramadan? Think about it. This hadith I'm remembering, and two hadith I'll share with you. Two hadith. Uh, ajib, unique hadith. As Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he narrated this hadith. That Allah Ta'ala states that if I, if I give the heavens and the earth the ability to speak, Allah is saying this, they can, they can speak, but we cannot hear. That's the reality. We can't hear, they can speak. Because Allah Ta'ala says, all my creation speaks, all the universe speaks, every atom, particle speaks, what does it say? Allah. It says Allah. Everything around us, every particle, Allah says, Everything is saying Allah. That thing is not alive, it doesn't have a tongue. And that thing doesn't have a tongue, then if it doesn't have anything apart from Allah, then it remembers. So it's alive. There's nothing. So the small child, young child, little, little child, little child, what does he know? It is moving. Does he know? Nothing. Child doesn't know anything. Two, three times if you say to the child, Allah, Allah, Allah. Child was sat there, Allah, Allah. The one I said Allah, child said Allah. Subhanallah. Yes? Then who told the child move and say Allah? Yes? Because Subhanallah, when we read Quran, we rejoice. It's fitra nature. Allah says, I've hidden it in the nature of man. Subhanallah, ingrained it. Allah's achieved, Allah, Allah's greatness of His name. Our hearts don't move, but the child's heart is moving and he's enjoying. This is called jazb. This is hal. This is where you, people go like trance. And he's moving. Some people go into hal. They rip their clothes. They're in a bad way, you could say, externally. Because inside they're so strong reciting Allah's name. So what does the child know? Young child, little child, toddler. Yes. And, and the, subhanAllah, you taught it the name Allah. You say Allah. No. Allah. Allah. Subhanallah. He started moving the child. So this is the, nat- the nature and the sign of Allah. The power of Allah. That's such a great thing. Allah says every particle in the universe is inviting us, giving us dawah. Things that don't have a tongue, they're inviting us. And what do we do? We don't value it. We have no qadr. We have no appreciation. So Allah Ta'ala said that if I, if I, if I give ability to speak, power to speak to the earth and the heavens, then what, what that we could hear, we had so much from them that speak to the human beings, then what they would tell us, the Imam Allah, all they would just say one thing, the heavens and the earth, when they speak to us, just one thing they tell us, time and time again, repeating them, what an important thing, they will only speak for one reason, they will congratulate us. What will they say? They will just say one statement, time and time again, oh people who fasted, who kept the fast correctly, congratulations, you've done a massive action, that you don't know. So we've kept the fast. What a great achievement. The fast has given us this learning. Ramadan is such a fantastic thing that Allah Ta'ala has given to us. Those people who fasted correctly. And they valued Ramadan. Tell me. What a great piece of news. That, is there a greater month than this? The person who's kept a fast. And his laziness. The biggest laziness is sleep, isn't it? Normally, even his sleep is ibadah in fasting. His silence is tasbih. In Ramadan, his silence is tasbih, subhanAllah. His du'as are accepted, all of them. His every ibadah is multiplied. Is Ramadan gone as in or has it not gone? Do we value it? Do we appreciate? Think about it. That every second of Ramadan, every moment of Ramadan was pulling us towards Allah, calling us to Allah, inviting us to Allah. Very few in our life will we have not run after dunya or will we have changed our routine of life during the worldly life. The haq, the right of Ramadan, the qadr, the value, the appreciation. What, do, what is the value and appreciation? Look, the sun's come out. Yes, it comes out with zawal. Yes, it gives a message every day, the sun, when it comes out. What does the sun bring? Brings light. Yes, it comes with light, doesn't it? The sun. Why does the light come? Allah Ta'ala says, the value this light. The objective Allah has given light for the purpose. We need to use that light for that purpose. We should utilize it, avail of it, benefit from it. So we value that light. Then Allah shows that it's only for a few hours. After that, the darkness will come again. The sun will set. And then during that night, you won't be able to do any action in the dunya. No work. And this is Allah's nizam. Allah's cycle. Time and time again. Every day Allah shows us this cycle. People of wisdom and brain, of intellect, they'll have figured over this. That this heaven and earth Allah's created is not for no purpose. It's not without a purpose Allah's created the heavens and the earth. 
the, the, the earth and the cycle. So they'll utilize the light fully, 100%. Because in the night, there'll be no benefit for us. So the light, we can work, we use the light, we can see, we work. Night's about to come. Evening's going to come. Quickly, 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 use the light. Use the day. What do we do? Isn't it? We run around and we utilize the time. We utilize the day, the hours, the moments. And we should do that. We should do that. So that thing that Allah has created, everything Allah has created, when you utilize it according to its purpose and need, then you get the benefit. Then you value it. Then you appreciate it. So what's the value of the walis of Allah? Yes, Allah Ta'ala has given us such a great system, is only Allah. So we have to value them, isn't it? Appreciate them. Benefit from them. So what's the value of a wali Allah? The value of a wali Allah, appreciation of a wali Allah is that you, you should stick to them whatever they give to you, take it. Take it, that's it. Yes, don't delay. Don't delay, don't take shortcuts. Because when they come, they're giving, take from them. Otherwise you'll regret. That's why you have to work hard. Why? The Nema Allah Ta'ala says are given to you for this reason. After that when he departs, then there'll be regret. My Hazrat, that somebody told him a dream. To my Hazrat, he was the ghost of his time, my Shaykh. The ghost. And he was present in the Kaaba. And the brother came and he said, I've seen in the dream. No, to you. He didn't say you. He said, I've seen a dream. Hazrat, please, a unique dream. Please tell me the translation of this dream. What's the tabir? And this was Hazrat's final year after the Hazrat did not return. They had a ticket for Hajj. Uh, the Hazrat was on Umrah. They were to return for Hajj. And they prepared for Hajj in advance. When they used to go to Umrah, they used to prepare for Hajj in advance. When they'd go for uh, Umrah and Ramadan, then they'd be prepared for the next journey. That was their practice. Subhanallah. But Hajj, they couldn't perform that year. That... That they were sat there, maybe it was occurred, maybe in front of the Kaaba, Bayt Mamur, Tawaf was, had occurred, Allah Ta'ala prepares in the heavens for such people. So, uh, the brother said, Hazrat Sahib, I've seen a dream, what? He said, I've seen a dream that the Kaaba, you know the minars in the Kaaba, in the masjid, the main minar of uh, the Haram Sharif, this has dropped. So Hazrat Sahib said, Oh, ah, Babu, you've seen the right thing in their own dialect. Hazrat said, Babu, Hazrat Sahib, you say, Babu, to me, Babu, you are saying the right thing. That in this generation, such a big wali of Allah is about to depart. That after him, not a wali Allah like him will not return to the earth, come to the earth. And then they stayed silent. Three months later or two months later, Hazrat Sahib passed away. They died. And after that, every man on his tongue was one statement. Big muftis, ulema, respected scholars, and the faqis, the biggest mufti azam of that time, Khairul Mudaris, Abdul Sattar sahab, rahimahullah alayhi. He led the janazah of Hazrat sahab. And such a big janazah, such a big gathering outside, the Hazrat passed away a zor time, but it was 2 a.m. in the night when Hazrat janazah took place. That's when it was, that's much dunya arrived, so many people arrived from all over Pakistan. And nobody even knew Hazrat Sahib that much. That he wasn't that famous. That he didn't even leave Gadaiba, his village. He never gave speeches. Somebody asked him, Hazrat Sahib, you don't go anywhere, you don't travel. He said, ha ha, the people who are weak, Allah Ta'ala sends people himself to him. Subhanallah. So I have no need to go anywhere. I have no need to go anywhere. That he sent me, and the whole of the world has changed. Subhanallah. Kufristan, the light has come. Subhanallah, Allah Ta'ala, the, subhanallah, Allah Ta'ala, He gives that favor to His friends. So Allah Ta'ala showed me the weakness. He said, I don't need to go anywhere. Allah Ta'ala sends people Himself to me. And they benefit. Subhanallah. So every man on his tongue, one statement came, that Yaar, we didn't value Hazrat Sahib. We didn't appreciate Sahib. We wasted too much time. So every man was regretting. And they were crying. But this is a great ni'mah. When mouth comes, Death comes in the Quran, it says that most of all the people will regret the jannati, I've already told you, they will have regret. That Allah send us back once, Allah, back to the world. Allah, please send us back to the Ramadan. Allah, we will never commit a mistake again. We will never do wrong. We won't sin again. Allah, we are just like that brother, the poor soul who was dying at that time. I'll come to the Khan, I'll do dhikr. He had the regret. So brothers, we are alive now. We are present here. Value the life. Appreciate life. This is the final Laylatul Qadr of Ramadan. We have no guarantee. We don't know. The whole year is to come after that. And the thousands of sicknesses are coming, and viruses are coming, sicknesses are coming, stories. Raise the hand. Stand up today. Ramadan we won't get again. It's possible. Such a valuable thing. 
So the final moments of Ramadan, today is Laylatul Qadr. And it's a great night. And this night we should value it, appreciate it. And I've told you how to do Qadr, how to value, how to appreciate that that time, Allah Ta'ala is even giving you a purpose for something. The purpose Allah has given us this night in the end of Ramadan. If in the whole Ramadan you couldn't do what you needed to do, then do that tonight. And what is the action? That make, bring Allah onto your side. Allah is so unhappy with us. Very unhappy with us is Allah. He's displeased with us, extremely unhappy with us. But such a night that very quickly Allah will become happy with us at the same time. Shadidul Iqab is Allah. He can give azab extreme, but on the same time in parallel, He is Ghafoorul Rahim as well. Allah says the answer, the Hilmun Mazid, Allah says, La taqnatu. Like the one Jannam says, bring more in, bring more in. Allah Ta'ala says, La taqnatu. Do not give up with my mercy. I will forgive. Let Jahannam speak. But never give up, never lose, never despair with my mercy. Al Man Mazid, Allah says. Yes, that one general will say, bring more, bring more. I'm not full, I'm not full, bring more. But that will be Allah's response. That's Allah's rahmah, Allah's mercy. That we should not waste this treasure. We have done ibadah, we've prayed salah, we've done everything. This is not the objective of Ramadan, it's not worship. After Ramadan you'll do the same. You'll get thawab. This is not the purpose of Ramadan. Tahajjud will come after Ramadan. In the heavens every night, Allah Ta'ala, at tahajjud time, He speaks to you, just like He does in every night of Ramadan. So this is not the uniqueness of Ramadan. Night of Jummah will come again. It will become Laylatul Qadr again, the night of Jummah. Yes, Allah has kept these things. But Ramadan won't come back again. Ramadan. And you have to value Ramadan according to its status, the quality. If Allah is happy tonight, today, then Allah won't be happy like this again during the rest of the year. That's the uniqueness. So with an honest heart, a sincere heart, make Allah happy and Allah suddenly becomes happy just from one thing. We say, Allah, forgive us. Ya Allah, forgive us. Allah, we do tawbah, we repent to you. That with your nafs, with your desires, with shaitaniyat, Allah, we didn't value you, we didn't appreciate you, Allah, with all these negatives. Allah, we accept, we admit. And here we have to admit tonight, we have to accept tonight to Allah. We have to accept, we have to open up. That Allah, it's all our fault. Allah, that was a complaint. Disease comes, we complain. When we have problems, we complain. We have difficulties in life, we complain to you. When there's not enough to eat, we complain to you. When our children are disobedient, we complain to you. Allah, there's not a moment in our life that we do not complain to you. If only, Allah, if only we realize that all these things are based on your hikmah and your wisdom and they are all a luggage, a means to your rada, your pleasure. All these stages of life and the ups and downs, if we have valued this, then Allah, you would definitely be happy with us. You'd never be unhappy with us. And this is the way to bring Allah on your side. Allah, want forgiveness from you. It's all my fault. It's my downfall. The things you gave us, we wasted them. We didn't like them. Allah, we criticize what you gave to us. Why am I sick? Why has this happened to me? Why has this happened to me? Why not to him? Why has he got better than me? He's got two children. He's got a son. Why haven't I got children? Why have I got daughters? Apart from criticism and complaints, our house is full of complaints. Our hearts are full of complaints to Allah. Why is he uh, not died? Why is he died? Why did you give to him? Why didn't you give to me? Why has he got higher status? Why am I lower status? All the criticism and disease by in comparison to the Allah, what are you gave to me, I'm happy. Whatever you gave Allah, I'm happy. I'm, I am happy with what you've given to me, Allah. This is not a difficulty. Allah, I'm happy with what you've given me. There's no sadness. Allah, I'm happy with what you've given me. You give me happiness, I'm happy, my Mullah. Allah, if you give me difficulty, I'm happy, my Mullah. Everything I accept. This is called making Allah happy. So today, this is the tawbah we need to do with Allah. The Allah, these are the things that have ruined us. These are the things we need to seek forgiveness for. Allah, after today, I will follow your guidance. Whatever you give, I'm happy. I will follow that. Not from my tongue will no criticism or complaint come ever. Doesn't matter how a great a tragedy happens in my life, calamity, but I will not complain. I might die, I'll be in pieces, but I will not complain. Suddenly, a person's life then transforms and it runs towards Allah's rada and happiness and pleasure. And after that, the result will definitely come. Yes, after Allah says that, 
the, the goodness will come after the negative. So we promise today is Laylatul Qadr. Allah Ta'ala, the sickness of ours, take it far from us and Allah become happy with us. That's it. Nothing else do we need, Allah. Uh, give us the life of Rada. The rest of our life that remains, Allah, that we live our life with your Rada, with your Fikr. And the concern and the namas you've given to us, the treasures, Allah allow us to have value and appreciation. What a great thing Allah Ta'ala said that if you if I've given you life before death, consider it a wealth. I've given you health before sickness, consider it as a wealth. Allah's given you health, isn't it? That Allah Ta'ala, if He's given you wealth and money, then before poverty, value your wealth. How Allah Ta'ala teaches us the goodness, teachings, good teachings. Allah has given sickness, then value your health before that. All of these namas and treasures, Allah says, value them, appreciate them, like them, utilize them. Their sickness, even to the last ex- uh, extent, that even through the sickness, have a determination and try hard. That Allah, that the action that is wajib on me, fard, I, at least somehow or other I practice that. Yes, don't give up and don't make a small heart. Even if you're sick, because as long as you've got a test with full uh, effort, I want to be a mujahida and do and do jahida and make uh, effort and work hard. Don't lose heart. Yes, now let me tell you, physically Ramadan goes, departs. The, the amount I was sick in this Ramadan, maybe I wasn't sick in any time of my life. I'm telling you the truth now, at the end of Ramadan. It was impossible for me. It was impossible for me. But I said, Allah Ta'ala, Allah, as long as I've got determination, as long as I've got determination and desire, then I will go there as long as I don't fall unconscious on the ground. They don't pick me up. I'm going to go. I'm not going to leave Ramadan. And this is the reality that my medicine's finished. Doctor wouldn't meet me. I had nothing. I can't tell you that what was my condition. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Thumma alhamdulillah. Thumma alhamdulillah. But in front of you, I'm sat fresh, refreshed. Subhanallah. So I'm speaking with you so I can give you drive and encouragement. Because mashallah, millions of times better than me you are. The one sneeze comes, we leave salam. And if your two customers you lose, you leave Ramadan. That if my work goes downhill, I leave deen. Value health, value health. That's what I learned. Value the good health. Value health. Even after sickness, when you have sickness, you can't do nothing, isn't it? You can't do anything physically when you're sick. Yes, it's a big test, a challenge for a human being. But that time, a person should tie the knot. Then what's going to happen? Okay, I'll go and well, maybe I'll fall unconscious, I'll fall down. Then I'll have to go to hospital here at home, I'll have to go to hospital there. If I've got beard, if I've got uh, stomach pain now, lying down, I'll get the stomach pain. Then it's such a severe pain that in my, in my uh, inside I was such a pain. I said, no, I'm going to Tarawi. I'm going. That's, that was my situation. But maybe my Tarawis will go. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allah says, you have determination. Of Ramadan will make your decision, make you fine. But try now. So Allah Ta'ala says, do dua for me, do for you. That at the end of Ramadan, Allah give me the ability to get to the end of Ramadan with salamat. Don't fall off the track. And subhanAllah, what's that saying, uh, those people, what's that saying, that couplet? The poem that you have determination and drive and try your best and Allah will give you the ability. Alhamdulillah. So today, what do we need to have the determination and courage for? Allah has given us the message. What's that message? What do we need to have the courage and determination for? You haven't understood yet? That your Rabb who you have lost, bring him back on your side. Make him happy. How? How do we make Allah happy? That Allah Ta'ala, you are unhappy with us, you are angry with us, that you give to us and we say we don't like it. You give to us sickness, we say we don't want to be sick. You give us health, we say we don't want help. So we won't do this anymore Allah. We won't go opposite to you. Whatever you give to us Allah, we like it. Allah will become happy. Yes, well, if you do that, so you won't do haram after that. Because haram, when does a person do haram? When he says, oh, this is very hard for me, let me seek the wrong path now. Let's take riba, interest. Oh, let's take it from the bank. Oh, eat that person's money. Consume his wealth. But when a person's happy, Allah, I'm happy you give me poverty and hunger. Then he won't do haram because he's happy with Allah. He's happy with Allah. Yeah, then why should he do wrong when he's happy with Allah? Allah's happy and he's happy. He said, I'll die, but I won't do the wrong. This is don't waste a life because life is a great gift of Allah. It's a massive gift and mouth is a severe test. Allah has given us a ni'mah, life, utilize it to the last second. Don't waste life. The Holy Prophet said, till the last breath. Rasulullah says to his beloved companions as a Mu'ad ibn Jabal, radiyallahu anhu, subhanAllah, Rasulullah announced, he stood and said, oh Mu'ad, I love you. 
He didn't just say to him to the whole dunya till qiyamah. That announcement will reverberate. I think that no other sahabi did Rasulullah give such a clear statement uh, as compared to Hazrat Muad. Mufti is no better than me. That openly Abu Bakr Zadig Rasulullah loved everybody. But he said that what was in my heart I put into your heart O oh Abu Bakr. To Abu Bakr Zadig. But it's such a way to say it openly. The oh Muad, Muaz. The, you won't meet me after today. Muad, I love you. Allahu Akbar. What a statement. End of story. I say he took the, the points that day. Openly announcement. Blatantly. And when Rasulullah shared his love, then what did he say? Muad, remember one thing. Do one thing for me. Definitely. Ya Rasulullah, please. I mean, he's crying as well. Rasulullah is crying. And he's crying. Tell me the scene. Affection. The Ashik's crying. Rasulullah is crying. And his beloved is crying. The after today you will not see me. Muad will be detached apart, then you will come back to my grave, Mu'ad. And his heart, it split. But it was the hukum of Rasulullah that you must go. Otherwise, can you imagine him leaving? How could he leave his beloved Rasulullah But he had the instruction, hukum is always greater than the love. And he was leaving his Nabi and Rasulullah told him, there's such a detachment that he's telling himself, that you won't meet me after today. But our relationship is so unique. That what's inside you, what's in me, I love you. And he replied, I love you as well, Ya Rasulullah. Subhanallah. Then he said one statement, Rasulullah said, that this is the test of my love, Muad. I will tell you a secret now. If only we could understand this, my friends. I will tell you a secret now. And I'll tell you the secret of my love for the sake of my love. I'll tell you a secret. Ya Rasulullah, what's that? That do one thing definitely. Then till your death, do one amal on going. For your tongue should be moist with dhikrullah. Subhanallah. Is there any greater gift than this? Than this scene, Rasulullah is teaching him this. This was the gift of the love of Rasulullah, the dhikrullah. How beloved this was. We say we don't feel like it, I don't want to do it. It's too hard for me. Look, when someone comes from far, then his heart is so happy that how much Allah Ta'ala is loving that person. Yes, that it, I don't have envy in anything. The person sacrificed so much, traveled so far. For your dhikrullah, that how much he must love you Allah. He must love you and he, you're making him do this amal. And some people, I see some people that don't like dhikr of Allah at all. They hate it. They criticize dhikr. They dislike it. They have enmity with dhikr. They think it's bad. Negative. I've seen these scenes. I've seen, but Allah Ta'ala's law is something else, brothers. That if someone hates us, we slap him. Yes, if someone swears at you, you say, oh, you wait here. Let me tell you how I'm going to... We do that, don't we? We take revenge. If somebody gives you a little bit of pain, oh, I'm coming with you, my son, you see what I do to you. And what does Allah Ta'ala say? That Allah Ta'ala, that person's hating the he's disliking it. And look at Allah Sunnah. But the, when I see a person like that, then Allah Ta'ala sends him to his dhikr. Allah sends him, that Allah Ta'ala loves him so much that despite all of that, Allah Ta'ala sends him on the right path. That, that person, the two people, Rasulullah Sallam and the Sahabi, till the final sign was, the, the sign of mine and your love will be that if you continue doing dhikr till the end. I say, Allah, so beloved is this action to you that that person, he's disrespectful, he swears and, and he dishonors it. How do you bring him to the majlis? Just be quiet, I know and my servant knows best. What do you know that how much I love my servant? That I want to save him from Jahannam, from hellfire. Say, subhanallah. Subhanallah. So we'll conclude here. A little bit of time left. Let's do the dhikr of Allah. The Laylatul Qadr is about to come. The words we discussed. Make it solid and strong. Okay? Make Allah happy tonight. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah 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 موسیقی یا اللہ ہمارے مابا کو بخش دے یا اللہ ہمارے مابا کو بخش دے